In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The Blessings of Permanent Prayer If a person prays continuously, his life will be beautiful. The first blessing of permanent prayer is familiarity or intimacy. What's intimacy mean? With man, we don't like this word intimacy, but with God, it is very beloved. Intimacy means position or sometimes spoiling. Intimacy means that he who prays a lot from his heart becomes more precious in God's eyes. He becomes close to God. Do you remember the situation in the book of Numbers when Moses' sister Mariam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married? With God's permission, of course, or by a divine order. Mariam was thinking, how could some black woman enter into the family? And this is a royal family. Miriam is thinking the same way that the world thinks, all the people following their lead. How is it that her younger brother, Miriam is older than Moses, marries one who she does not like, although she is his sister? So what did she do? She convinced Aaron of her ideas, messed everything up. So God became enraged. Moses kept silent because he is a man who does not know anything except praying. He is a hundred years old but he doesn't know to do anything except pray. So God called the three of them to him as if they'd done something wrong, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, and he said to them, Come to me at the door of the tent. God here is like the father when there is a dispute between his children. He holds them to mediate. He said a beautiful word to them. He said, Miriam, you are a prophet, and Aaron, you are the high priest. But when I speak with you, I speak with visions or a puzzle. But when I speak to Moses... Do you know how I speak to him? I speak to him as if he is my friend. I speak to him face to face. Will you guys correct Moses and tell him what's right and what's wrong? Why God? How come Moses, who is the younger of the two siblings, came to have this position with you? Because of of the 40 nights that he spends on the mountain. Every once in a while, he goes up the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights and he doesn't come down. What are you doing, Moses? I'm sitting with God. And every time Moses does one of these 40-day trips, he goes up a step until he became God's beloved and friend. So when Moses says something, no, he's not just anyone. So God got upset when, when, with them because they spoke a word against Moses. Moses, by his goodness, begged God to forgive them. For my sake, Lord, those are my brethren who are older than me. God said to him, for you, we give her one week. One week leprous, and then she'll be cured. Intimacy, having this status with God, is directly tied to prayer. How come there was no one like our mother, St. Mary? Because her whole life is prayer. She knows nothing else anyway. Her whole life is prayer. If you collect all of St. Mary's speech from uh, written in the Gospels, you'll find three quarters of it is prayer. That is her, her most famous praise when she said, My soul does magnify the Lord. The rest of her speech is two or three words sprinkled here and there throughout the Bible. For example, she says, Whatsoever he says to you, do it. Stuff like that. Light words. The words she says to people are extremely measured. Why? She doesn't have time to speak with anyone. All the time goes to prayer. We say to her, we have no boldness except through your requests and intercessions. When you pray more, your request is more precious. When you drop your request to God, he says to you, Okay, because the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. How does this righteousness come? It comes by prayer. Righteousness in Christianity is being close to God. The Bible says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The second blessing of permanent prayer is a pure heart. All of us have a crisis with our hearts. I do not think that any one of us have reached this point yet. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What does that mean? It means that they see God as we see each other. Of course, we have a long way to go to reach that point. Purity of the heart is an organic fruit of the life of prayer. When you pray a lot, your heart becomes clean. When someone cleans a plate or a sticky pan, he needs three things. Water, hot water that is, because if it's cold, we'll never finish. Detergent and a sponge, and you scrub. These three things to clean the pan. The hot water that falls continually is permanent prayer, and it needs to be hot, hot prayer. 
The soap is the word of God because this is which is this is what makes the grease melt. The scrubbing is what is repentance. These three clean the pan, clean the heart, and make the heart shine. If there is no hot water, do not imagine that your heart will be clean. How could it get clean? Condemning people will remain. Pride will remain. Desires, sadness, anxiety, fear, they will remain. This heart is all messy because it lacks prayer. When you pray a lot, you find every time the heart gets a little bit more pure. We say, the pure heart creates God inside me. The third blessing born from permanent prayer is the virtues. I'll review again. The first blessing from praying a lot is intimacy. This intimacy means that when you request from God, God sees you different than anyone. Why are you not just anyone? Because you're St. Anthony, you're St. George, you're John the Baptist. The second thing is, he will give you a pure heart. And of course, you're lucky if your heart becomes pure. The third thing is the virtues or the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are a result of a seed that yielded a root, which yielded a stem. And the stem went up and yielded branches which yielded green leaves, and then the fruits. The, sp the Spirit's fruits are a result of spiritual growth that took a long time until resulting in love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. When you find someone who has lots of patience, like the Prophet Moses, it is the fruit of 40 years. It didn't come in a day. In the wilderness, God told him, you'll be secluded with me, and I'll be secluded with you. Did you think the work with me is easy? Are you going to leave Pharaoh's palace and become a prophet? Will you not sit with me? So what then? Moses sits for many nights and has nothing to do except God. There are some sheep around him, and he sits speaking to God. David, same thing. He took the same course for 15 years speaking to God. Elijah the prophet sat on the, mount, the mountain speaking to God. All these yielded the fruits of the Spirit. Then the Spirit's fruits are a result of permanent prayer. Then whoever wants to reach any virtue should know that reaching any virtue is a result of hot continuous prayer. And the parable of the sower, But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Sometimes we do not have patience in the prayer. We get away, we daydream, we rush. Give some time to God. Bring forth fruit with patience. The fruit needs patience to come forth. Another blessing of permanent prayer is victory over demons. We review again. Intimacy, purity of heart, and virtues. There is nothing that terrifies Satan like the hot prayer. There are a variety of stories in the paradise of monks it says that a devil was just passing in the area while this or that monk was praying and he got tied to the door of the silo. After Satan ties up people, prayers ties him up. Then that good monk heard crying and screaming after, the, after his prayer. When he went outside, he found a line of demons all lined up around the silo. He had, dis he had a disgusted look on his face and he said to them, What a failure! Go away in shame! Then he went back in to continue his prayers. See how much authority he has? That's because his life is prayer. His job is praying, morning and night, and he's happy with prayer. The whole area was cleaned from demons because of his prayers. See, when Satan plays us with the thought of anger or the thought of condemnation, it's because the devil is coming very close to us. Why? This man's domain covers the desert. Our domain doesn't cover even ourselves because our prayers are weak. So you find Satan whispers in your ear and chit-chats with you and takes you as a friend. How come he approaches us like this at, at his leisure? Because there's no prayer. The prayer is little. If we pray more, can Satan come close? See St. Paul because he was praying so much even when he was serving. When the sons of Sceva started exercising devils, they thought it was, thought it was easy work. But when they said to the devil, we exercise you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. The man looked at them and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but you, who are you? Then he gave them a strike. The devil jumped on them, hitting them. Why? Do you think that you will play with me without prayer? Bring it on. Without a prayer, bring it on. As one today 
thinks that that gift or exercising demons is easy work, easy work, without the life of prayer, without the life of holiness. No, no, he plays with you and tend just like you. But if he is a man of unceasing prayer, he says, Paul, I know him in our camp of demons. He is terrifying. His name is terrifying. Why is his name terrifying to the demons? Because he never stops praying. All the time he says, O Lord Jesus. Paul says, giving thanks for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is a man who does not stop calling on God the whole day. He doesn't finish praying. So permanent prayer provides immunity from the demons. It gives victory over the demons. Any war, any problem, imagine you have a problem in your home. Because you are a man of prayer, it gets resolved immediately. A spiritual war breaks apart if you know how to pray well. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. All of that comes by praying. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this will I be confident. Why? Because I pray.